Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Um, today, I'm talking to David Lapissier. He is the Global Head of Data and Analytics at Pernod Ricard. They're the worldwide producer of wines and spirits, I think number one or two in the world. Looking forward to hearing a bit more about them. Um, David, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. I'm looking forward to talking to you about how uh, an AI team can empower an FMCG company like Pernod Ricard. Um, so welcome along to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very really glad to be here. Yeah, brilliant. So, um, yeah, why don't we hear a bit about you just to get started, um, your background, uh, how you got into data and, and, and the current role you have at Pernod Ricard, please. All right. So uh, I started my career at uh, IBM, uh, where um, I initially worked on more uh, business intelligence, which to me uh, uh, the grandfather of uh, data science. Uh, and afterwards, um, uh, I joined Pernod Ricard nine years ago. Uh, well, as you said, we are uh, the number two uh, uh, large company uh, in wine and spirits. Uh, and uh, uh, I gradually work on many topics. And uh, six years ago, we built up our first data science team. And uh, I've been now pointing to a new direction where we are more uh, uh, inside the sales and marketing teams. And uh, we've built up a quite large team, uh, which I will be very glad to talk about what we do uh, and what we have some challenge uh, in, in the coming months and years. Great. And um, the Pernod Ricard organization, um, what are some of the brands we might know uh, know about uh, the city? Yeah. That? So uh, if you have some uh, convenient time, you can enjoy like brands like uh, Jensen, Absolute, Shivas, or Martel, which was uh, worldwide known. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it responsibly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't, so definitely enjoy it, uh, mostly responsibly. Um, so, um, Great. And um, I mentioned about sort of FMCG. It's a phrase that sort of if you're in FMCG, you know, and if you're in in sort of, sort of certainly sort of tech sales, it's a it's an industry they focus on, for example. Um, but what, what does that mean? So, um, well, we are a consumer goods company. So uh, uh, most of our um, uh, employees are commercials and marketing teams with also some finance HR and the rest. But uh, the most important part is commercial team. So uh, obviously, if you join Pernod Ricard as a data scientist, uh, you're kind of a weirdo uh, within the organization because it's not uh, most what most people do. So you need to explain what you do. Uh, you need to uh, understand how commercials and marketing teams works. Uh, and you need to be part of it. You need to be what, sorry? You need to be part, you know. I mean, you need to include yourself in this uh, organization. Uh, Probably different if you join a tech company, which, well, most of people know what the data scientist is about. Uh, for us, you need to, to talk about it. Fine. So just, uh, I guess, from a, like, cult culturally in a, a, a FMCG, a fast-moving consumer goods company like Pernod Ricard, it's a new topic, um, mm -hmm. data science, data. It's a new topic. It's um, not not been in its legacy, certainly in an older organization like yours. So. I can see where some some yeah challenges come from that, and, and also some opportunities. So let, let, let we'll get into that. I think I'm looking forward to discussing that a bit more. Um, so yeah, so so let's 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 start on some positives. I, I think um, in terms of rather than going straight to the challenges and the difficult bits, um, kind of what kind of um, use cases, what kind of business challenges, what kind of problems, what kind of opportunities has um, data science um, been able to, and AI and, and, and other data activities and, and technologies, what, what's that been able to support and help the, uh, the business on? Um, when I started uh, six years ago uh, with the team, we were uh, trying to uh, be uh, ready to make all the possible use cases. So we were doing things uh, in HR, supply chain, finance, commercials and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, but a year ago, um, our um, uh, bureau executive uh, decided that uh, we needed to focus uh, only on the, on the, on the biggest uh, things that's going to uh, impact uh, more of Pernod Ricard. Yeah. Uh, and that's why that um, they decided at this stage to uh, focus on uh, uh, making impact on promotions. So uh, every time we do some uh, discount uh, on our product, like uh, one euro uh, saving uh, on our bottles, uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, it uh, generates uh, a lot of revenue uh, that our consumer is uh, um, going to use it. And so it's a very broad and big use case uh, because uh, technically speaking, we need to uh, like look at all the post promotions that happened in the past, uh, cross it with all the data we have uh, from our uh, distributors to, right. to make sense of it. 
Um, the second business case we have is uh, around uh, marketing mix modeling, uh, trying to uh, figure out uh, the best way to uh, spend uh, all our money in advertising uh, on the right brand and the uh, right touch point. Touch point being uh, social media, uh, for example, or TV. Uh, and the last one is uh, how to uh, allocate our uh, sales rep uh, on the field uh, effectively. Uh, so trying to find out all, all the uh, hotels, bars, restaurants, uh, where uh, they will make uh, the most impact by visiting them, talking about the brands uh, and pushing the right brands uh, in, in this space. Right, are you, um, as a um, FMCG business, are you, are you dealing direct w with the consumer or, or, is, or is it um, other businesses that are buying from you? Well, um, we have different activities. Mo most of our activities are more uh, B2B uh, yeah. because uh, we sell to uh, big retailers like Tesco, like Walmart, uh, and uh, we uh, also have some on-trade activities in some certain uh, countries. Uh, right. On-trade activities for us is uh, hotels, bar, uh, and restaurants. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have a, a platform, uh, an e-commerce platform, which is called Drinks Co, uh, where you can buy uh, our products directly or also some competitors' products. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of our activities uh, are still uh, more uh, on the field and B2B. Got it. So when, when you talk about the use case of impact on promotions and, and trying to drive better promotions, is that in support of the, uh, you know, the retailers, for example, selling on to the end consumer, or is that promotions to the, um, to the sort of more B2B partners? More B2B partners. So um, if I, uh, I talk about, about promotions, the idea is really to empower our sales rep uh, to uh, uh, have better negotiation and better um, way to do our promotion. So typically, um, uh, what we will uh, spot with the team uh, is for uh, a sales rep saying, this promotion, we did it in the past. We have a bad margin uh, on this one. Uh, instead of uh, doing like uh, one bottle uh, half price for one bottle uh, bot, uh, instead, you can have a 10% uh, reduction on the price. Uh, and on the shopper, uh, and the shopper will uh, have it on his uh, uh, on his card, on fidelity card. Uh, and by doing so, uh, we improve our margin, might sell more, and uh, that's how we, we are doing. So we are really um, are trying to empower our sales rep. Uh, and what we used to say is, the machine by itself is well useless. Uh, what's really uh, for us uh, the best things to do is that sales rep takes the machine and together work uh, on, on making things happen. Mm, yeah fan fantastic and, and how so just sort of can we dig into that a bit how, how has data uh, and analytics played what, what role is it has it played in in creating those you know, better promotions so um if i take this uh, continue on the promotions um a project for us will be that um we're gonna first uh, take all the data coming from uh or uh, uh our sales because uh, they have some huge uh, files where they say, I did these promotions. Uh, it started on January 1st and ending in the 12th. Um, well, first, most of the time, uh, the file is not well uh, filled. So we need to have lots of exchange because uh, the quality is there and needs to be challenged. Um, afterwards, we take, um, uh, because we have some partnership with some retailers to have all the sellouts uh, of, from Pernod Ricard, but also from competitors. Um, and what we typically do is that we uh, try to, uh, uh, to get some link on this data, show this information to sales rep because uh, obviously they've never had time before to analyze all this data. So uh, we need to connect with them to explain all the results. Uh, they take into uh, account all this uh, information uh, and they say, okay, now we are going to, uh, to, to look and deep dive on some of these promotions. Uh, what can you do? And uh, that's where we try to do some optimization and simulation uh, and saying, okay, you can switch to a different promotion. You can play with uh, the seasonality. Uh, you can play with uh, different mechanisms uh, of promotions. Um, and well, the beginning is more manual things where we uh, do some of this restriction. And uh, from time to time, we try to automatize things uh, like having their, all their files stored in some place and also uh, we build up a website for them so they can interact with our models and they can run simulation by themselves. Mm. Uh, and the end game for us is uh, at one stage you say, okay, I believe in what you, uh, you, you have been built. Uh, I'm going to talk to the retailers uh, based on the estimation uh, you said. Uh, and 
it, it's very tough for them because it's a, a lot of change. So they need to be really convinced about it uh, because afterwards they will go to Tesco and say, guys, uh, I estimated by doing this promotion, you, Tesco, will have a better margin and Pernod Ricard also. And this is the estimation of gain. Uh, yeah. Of course, they need to trust 100% uh, what we do. Otherwise, they will never do this well. Yeah. And I guess that, that requires, um, you know, obviously some success proof points that, that, that those forecasts were accurate and, and that your predictions were accurate. Um, and, and also just a level of trust in the relationship that you have um, with, with, the, with, your, with your customers. Um, I'm sure that um, there's some, yeah. some, some opportunity and challenge there. Is that a similar, similar thing you're doing with the market mix modeling then? Because um, I presume that's a little bit more kind of, um, you know, above the line brand type stuff, given that you're not directly selling to consumer. That, that's about getting in front. So how do you, how do you track that the investment then to make sure that, you know, as you say, the market, you're investing the market, um, investing your marketing bucks, uh, euros in the right place? Well, um, we used to say that at Teorica, we are good to spend money but uh, very bad to track where we spend it. Yeah. Uh, and so to do this program, um, uh, we need to have a very detailed information like every week, uh, what kind of um, uh, campaigns we did on which brand and which touch point. Uh, and most of the time, this information is very difficult to, to track. Uh, and so uh, to make this program happen, we need lots of work with marketing teams uh, to gather all this information. But uh, when we do, uh, and again, when we cross it with uh, all the sell, uh, the sell out we have, um, we can effectively see uh, a direct link uh, to uh, what amount uh, we spend and what uh, are uh, the impact uh, to the sales. And the, the end game for us is to uh, build um, uh, a good budget plan uh, and plan all our activities using all these information. Uh, and for example, we say um, we'll reduce uh, the budget in TV uh, for this brand because it's not effective, uh, but uh, going in bars and doing some activation is more effective for this brand. Right, right. And so, so, so yeah, tracking tracking where the investment goes, tracking the response rate that you get, and and the impact exactly. that has on sales. I guess you can't, you know, it's different from a from a retailer who who makes some investment in a you know in advertising some certain products or to a certain target audience, and then they can track that back through to the you know web purchase. You don't have that line of sight, but I presume you can track the impact, you know, over as a as a trend in exactly. terms of the investment that you make and and what that ends up um, delivering. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. And um, I think the third one you talked about there, just to sort of wrap that up, is the sort of allocation of sales reps. So is that about resource? Ma is that about resource management? So where where's the best? Where's the sort of highest chance of of conversion? I suppose, or is that some is that something different? Yeah, yeah. So um, the idea is to, uh, for, to, to do it simply is to sell uh, the right guy in, in the field with the, and push the right product. Mm -hmm. So uh, to do so, um, we uh, take the history of all the visits we have uh, and we try to identify uh, new opportunities. Right. An opportunity for us could be, for example, a bar just opening. Um, and we can track uh, this uh, by uh, leveraging uh, sometimes social media data that we could buy. Uh, where we can see uh, this store is just open. There's very a lot of influence there, uh, and so we can send uh, this guy. And so we also try to optimize their route, saying that uh, you should normally visit four or five uh, establishment a day uh, because you do a lot of travel in this area. Uh, and we try to say, okay, we'll try to optimize point A, B, C, D, E, F, F, and try to add you this new uh, direction within the way, uh, and so you you be more effective. So it's really, again, uh, to empower our sales rep. Uh, and we also do in that some markets, for example, uh, in the US, we can buy some wholesalers data. Uh, and so we have all the sales, the sales of this wholesaler. So we know each category uh, where they sell. And if we identify, for example, that uh, uh, this bar is uh, strong on, on uh, selling tequila, uh, well, uh, if it's competitor uh, brands, well, we can go there and have this discussion with them and really trigger uh, this opportunity for us. Mm. Right. Yeah, great. So, and I can see but the mix of those three um, main use cases or focus areas kind of, yeah, as you say, it's all focused on commercial and, and, and making sure you're, you're, you're supporting your, your, your customers as well. And, but also, mm -hmm. as you say, getting good return um, and margin gain and, and, and sales opportunity for you guys. So, 
And and I think just sort of linking that back to what you said at the start in that, you know, um, it, this, this is change, this is new, this is change, this is different. And obviously you've been there for a while helping to support this, but what are some of the challenges that you've had in, in making some of this happen? You know, have you had some some dead ends or failures along the way that have helped you to then, you know, pivot and, and get to a point where these, you know, use cases are really successful? Yeah. Um, the way I see it, uh, this kind of project, it's always a, a succession of failures until uh, we effectively manage to change something. Um, if I take back the example of promotions, well, uh, we have very bad data at Pernod Ricard because uh, we are, and I think it's the case of most consumer goods company, we are uh, not using technologies every time we want to do something. We are performing action and not tracking every time what we do. And that's right. pretty normal, but uh, to make it happen, uh, we need to uh, uh, to put in place now some uh, some uh, data stewards who's going to take, uh, take this position and, and look at it. Uh, so well, one thing is that many people talk about it, but yeah, quality of data is very bad uh, and we need to change things uh, along the way. Um, the second thing I would say is that um, uh, we need to push a lot to make this program happen uh, because uh, obviously you are effectively changing uh, the daily life uh, of some people. Uh, I was taking the example of the routes uh, to commercials. Uh, having a commercial trust uh, somehow, uh, someone who is not effectively in his market, uh, because we are we are deploying this program in all Pernodicar countries, so uh, uh, it's sometimes very challenging to tell him, well, please visit uh, this store. You never visited it. We don't know better your work than you do because you have obviously more experience. But we really think it's a good opportunity uh, to make this happen. Well, you need to convince uh, lots of people. You really need to explain why, uh, and why is very, very important. Uh, you can't just say do it and and, and let's go. It's not going to change from one day. So that's why our program takes six to nine months to deploy in the market, right. because from the bad quality of data, from the uh, the time you spend to analyze it uh, and present it and make sure that people really used it, well. It's very iterative. You need people to trust you. It's always going to be very difficult to do. Yeah. And um, is it is there some sort of tactics or strategies that you've deployed in order to 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 build up that trust, to to convince people to change their behaviour, to to you know tell them to listen to the system, you know the computer, mm -hmm. what the computer's saying? Is there some tricks that you've pulled there? Because that that's really, I mean, that is a really you know, that, that's where that I think that's where you, data and analytics and data science stuff is made made or broken is is on mm -hmm. the um, is on the execution and on on the on the result, which is someone changes does something different in order to achieve a better result. Um, but as you say, you, you're, if you're asking someone to go to a different route, go to some different bars, sell some different things to what they're used to, and might perceive or even or even be happy with the results that they've got. You know, why should they? Why should they listen? Yeah. So, have you got some some tricks that you've used there? So, um, uh, there is no no magic tricks, but mm -hmm. uh, there are some good things that we did. I think we have. Uh, first, um, we didn't uh, send uh, the data scientist alone uh, with commercial team. We sent him uh, with a new position we've created called uh, deployment lead, someone with okay. a, a good background uh, of um, presenting a project, managing it. Uh, and conduct uh, this change management. So uh, uh, having the right uh, skill to, to do it, uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, the data scientists call, uh, work directly with commercials and sales marketing. They are with them in the room to build up all these solutions. Uh, if you don't, I think if you don't have access to uh, your uh, customers, you will never make it happen. Uh, yeah. If you do, uh, if you do, I think, specifications and uh, spend so much time to define what you do, it's going to be very difficult. So that's why it's very iterative. We are talking to each other every day. I mean, commercials and data sciences. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it, for us, it would never work. Yeah, so that's del delivering it together rather than rather than delivering it to them and saying, exactly. Here we go. here's, a new, here's a new route, here's a new plan. It's kind of going, look, we want to improve 
your sale, the sales, your margin, you know, success rate, let's work on that together. Let's find a way of unpicking that and then working back to your data science solution. Exactly. The, the trust is very important. So yeah. if they trust the person, they're probably going to at some stage uh, trust the results. Yeah. How did you build the trust on the data quality? So you mentioned that was one of the other main challenges. Um, yeah. And really, it sounds like that was that was quality on the basis of lack of entry and, and track and tracking of it in the first place. So how, how did you manage that? Was that a was that a kind of case of convincing the convincing people that it was right or putting steps and work in place to make sure it was right in the first place? So um well, what what we need to do is to create value first, um, mm. because we uh, you, you won't convince uh, someone from commercial team to uh, effectively be better at um, uh, at looking at all the their promotion. Mm. So we took at first uh, what we had, so bad bad informations. We tried by ourselves to make sense of it, out of it, and do as much as possible as all the things we could do by ourselves without asking too much yeah. uh, and try to run our models based on this. Right. Uh, and when we effectively do uh, our first run, well, it was very tough for us because uh, we need to do a lot of matching, a lot of uh, uh, feeling by, uh, by, by our hand, uh, really uh, nothing magical there. Mm. Uh, but we show the value to the commercial team. And after what we say, okay, we did very bad things uh, on top. Nothing is very automated. Now you see the value, we can make something better. And so we come back to them and we show all the problems to make it happen. Uh, and we told them what data quality is about, we try to name some data stewards locally uh, to make things run. Uh, and effectively, they are motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. But all these tasks, yeah, well, it's very uh, cumbersome. Uh, yeah. And you, no one wants to work on it. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. And as you say, the, 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 but the important bit is showing people the value of, of doing it and what improvements it can make. And um, that helps people to be motivated to, uh, to fix these things. Yeah. In terms of um, how you're set up, so um, we haven't really talked about how Perno Ricard are, are sort of set up as a business, but I know you're global. I know you're very distributed. You're in, I, I guess, the majority of countries around the world. I know those brands that you talked about are, are prevalent. Um, so how, how how are you set up from a data perspective? So I, yeah, just good to unpick your sort of business org structure and then, and then the, how data fits in. You know, are you very kind of centralized and you run a function uh, um, in France that, that kind of serves everybody? Is it very much more distributed than that? And each country has their own capability. How are you kind of set up? So um, the, the way we saw it uh, since the beginning is that we needed to build a global team because uh, all these free programs is to be deployed in markets. Mm. And all the markets have some specificities. Uh, so there's some markets, for example, you, where you can't do uh, some techniques of promotions and, right. and we need to take it into account. Um, so that's why we build up a team, which is uh, a good part in France, but uh, we have also people uh, in the US, uh, in India and China uh, to make it happen and to, have, to be able to uh, answer 24-7 uh, on our program. Mm. And are they... Um... Uh, have you got like full full set of skills, end to end skills needed in in data analytics in the markets, or have you got some kind of central capability focused on I don't know data engineering or or analytical capability, and then it's just sort of the final mile local market knowledge applied to things in market. So um, the way we set up things is that um, we have two uh, effectively team who work on data. We have um, my team is um, composed of data scientists, uh, which well, are the one who, as I said, talk to uh, business teams, uh, build up our models, but they help with uh, ML engineers uh, to scale it, uh, and also some data analysts to fill the gap with uh, deployment leads, build some KPIs, some dashboards, uh, and we are also senior data scientists, which are positions of people who uh, are more the guys who own the vision uh, of all this program and uh, lead the team. So uh, this is my team. And um, the way we are set up is that um, we have uh, most of the position in Paris, but data scientists also sent uh, in different uh, countries. 
Um, but we are also a team which we call um, uh, Center of Excellence, Data Center of Excellence, right. which belong to uh, IT department. Uh, and it's very important that we work well together because uh, they are owning all the platform uh, side um, because we are working with um, major companies like um, uh, Google, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, and AWS on our, on our cloud activities. Mm -hmm. uh, and they handle all the tech side uh, of it. And all the data engineering parts is belong to them. And it's very good for us because uh, most of the data belong in our IT systems. Uh, and uh, they have a good network to call all our IT counterparts uh, to take this data and, and make it available for us. Right, wow. And how, how do you coordinate across, across the group? Because I imagine you know, something, a requirement, a need, a problem can manifest itself in market that needs some of that local market knowledge, needs some of your sort of data science center of excellence knowledge may need some engineering and platform work doing. How mm -hmm. do you coordinate across, across those groups and just make sure that you're, you know, you're edging forward together and working on the, the things that are most valuable for the organization? Well, so let's say, to be, well, um, when someone in the, in the company, I usually told him uh, it's going to take you two months uh, to onboard. Mm. Uh, and that's pretty normal because uh, he needs to meet everyone to understand how we work. Uh, and, um, well, the coordination by itself uh, is made because people will meet each other, they will understand the role of everyone, uh, and they'll be able to connect. Uh, and we have, uh, since the beginning, not defined completely all the roles of people. Uh, we just put there people with some uh, skill sets, uh, with uh, a specific role saying, bah, we say, for example, you are in charge of the platform, you're in charge of the support of the platform, you're in charge of displaying this country. Uh, and by doing this, people find their way, they find their position and coordinate with everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, we never uh, describe completely what they're supposed to do, uh, how the organization is supposed completely to work. And so uh, if you look at it, it, it could be like looking like kind of a mess. But if you go in detail, people will say, no, no, I know it, it's this guy who's going to help me. Mm. Uh, and people share this uh, knowledge more of people rather than a complete role that's been pretty fine. So it's more, um, it's more kind of allocating ownership to different parts of the kind of value chain. Um, yeah. And then it feels like um, relying on the culture of kind of collaboration, actually. It feels like that must be something that's quite a norm in your place rather than as you say, sort of the other option is sort of being really prescribed, job descriptions, boundaries, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. is, that, is that fair to say that you must have a good culture of collaboration if, if, that's, if that's to work? Yeah, yeah, completely right. And that's something we test uh, when we recruit someone. Like, is, uh, is he having a good collaboration? Uh, and even the best guy, if we feel that it's not going to be his case and he'd rather work alone, well, we unfortunately can't hire him. Yeah, very interesting. Cool. And what about you then? So you're the global head of data and analytics, um, running running the show there on on, on this side of things. Um, what, how have you seen? How have you? What, what do you see your role as? Um, and has that has that evolved and changed over time, um, or has it kind of been fairly consistent? Uh, so for the past year, as we needed to build the team, uh, I took a, a lot of time on the HR side. I would say uh, as a job, uh, trying to uh, uh, to, to uh, have uh, all these talents uh, in Pernod Ricard. And I really see that, uh, to me, it was really important that we have this, uh, this, this thing as really good talents uh, onboarded for the group. Um, and I also uh, personally think that it's kind of an asset uh, in a company to have a data science team because mm -hmm. you can perform some activities that your competitors won't be able to do. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I really saw a good part of my activities belong to uh, HR. Uh, some of it uh, also were um, on building a vision, share it with everyone, and make sure that everyone understands what we try to build, uh, connect with everyone. So uh, good part of management, I would say. Um, and the rest uh, was more uh, building sponsorship uh, and trust uh, with uh, all the markets uh, and all the sponsors we have for our program. That was my main activities. And it's probably going to switch a bit because uh, at some stage we will stop to recruit, mm -hmm. uh, at least not with the current pace that we have. Uh, but in, uh, my role will probably switch to go um, more in detail, uh, explain all the, the problems that we have, build partnership with big companies, 
for example, to, to have uh, more data uh, relevant for us. Uh, it's probably going to switch at some stage uh, and going to be less HR, but more uh, giving directions to, to the team. And are you, are you, do, do you spend most of your time, I guess, looking at obviously now with recruitment, I, I can see that being quite sort of hands-on and, and looking down, but, but is the going forward, is that sort of managing, you know, managing, running the team looking down or is it much more kind of looking up and out and working with your, you know, business counterparts and, um, and, and making sure you've got a clear agenda going forward? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, as I said, building trust is important and we need to build trust at all the levels of the company, uh, from the commercials to uh, the directors. And so we need to explain a lot uh, what we can and what we can't do. And it's a good part of my activity also. Yeah, yeah, exciting. Where, where, do you, where does it all report to? Are you, are you part of a business unit or are you into technology? Where, where do you sit? So um, we sit in a commercial and marketing department. Right. Uh, because we initially thought uh, all these uh, first business cases were uh, commercial and marketing. Mm. Uh, it might evolve at some stage. And I don't know what's going to happen because probably we're going to have topics like in finance or supply chain at some stage. Mm. Fine. So you've aligned yourself with, a, with where the, the, the priority use cases are. Um, I know you mentioned you work very closely with the technology team. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's, a good, um, it's a good way of setting yourself up. As you say, you're close to the, um, to the action that you need to be close to. So great. Mm-hmm. And, um, and how, uh, how have you found the journey? Uh, which bits of this have, you know, just as we start sort of wrap up, we get to finish on, on this actually. So the, the kind of like the bits of all of that that you've enjoyed where, if, you know, I know you came from a um, sort of data science background. So, so uh, um, yeah, where's, where's the most exciting being, uh, things been for you on this? Well, um, for me, the most excitement is that uh, I met so much people in the organization uh, I talk about so much different things uh, every day from the tech side, from uh, uh, the problems like uh, we don't have good quality of data, uh, like uh, having a uh, um, uh, commercial team explaining their problems. Uh, well, it's very exciting. You met so much people, you talk about so much different things. It's very cool. But well, it keeps your, your head very busy uh, every day and you need to switch to so much uh, different activities uh from day to day so uh well um i really enjoy what i do i really enjoy the time i spend with people uh and uh, uh the people we have here are very uh, convivial uh with a good spirit so it's very cool uh when i arrive in the, in the morning and I, I feel very happy to see all these people uh but uh i'm kind of and, and today i'm going on vacation i'm kind of a, a bit exhausted uh when i go home uh, because of switching off on all these activities. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And But uh, it's great that your answer to the bits that you've enjoyed the most is people, meeting people, talking to people, engaging with people, because, you know, whilst you're running a, a you know, data, data and data science and analytics function, you know, building solutions and technology and, and, and all the rest of it and getting it plugged in, it, it's, yeah, it's about people that makes the job interesting and exciting for you. Brilliant. Well, look, I I um I hope you have a good vacation. Sounds like you've uh you need you certainly need that. And um, but yeah, it's been fascinating listening to to your journey and and how you've uh, helped um Pernod Ricard to to kind of land what's a new and and potentially complex topic. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing all of that with us. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. It was very nice talking to you. I uh, really enjoyed it. Great. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We, we hope you enjoyed that. And um, we'll uh, catch you soon with plenty more to come.